Welcome to another episode of Cooking with Jesse. Today I'm bringing something tantalizing. Two previous episodes, the chicken kab- grilled chicken kebab and spaghetti bolognese, as well as a chocolatey DIY in between. Stay tuned. Today I'll be making for you some delicious chicken kebabs and some grilled shrimp. Let's get grilling. Okay guys, so I have my marinated chicken and this is half kg of chicken and for the marinade i used some yogurt some honey some pepper some ginger garlic paste but if you guys want specifics go down to the description this should feed around two to three people so let's get skewering so i have my skewers that i soaked overnight but if you don't have that time five three to five hours will do so i'm going to do this in a nice pattern i have my different colored bell peppers and my onion quartered so let's get skewering pickle so i got one piece put that through i think i'll go for green bell pepper I want to make this colorful put that through okay i'll do some onions and then i'll do chicken you guys can do it any pattern you want. I just want to maximize most of my ingredients. So, having a lot of trouble putting this in, but. Ah, there we go. I'll choose yellow now. So it's a bit of a messy job but it's quite satisfying seeing your kebab come together. So I'll do this for a few more sticks and then we'll get grilling. Okay guys, so I've used up all my chicken, chicken, and I'm putting it on the grill. And these will grill for 10 to 15 minutes but I'll flip them every five minutes. Take 10 to 15 minutes. You guys have to keep a very close eye on it. And it's sizzling and it sounds and smells amazing. And I just put it on the grill. With the same marinade I used for the chicken and the kebabs, I used it on these beautiful jumbo shrimp. These beautiful lovelies are going to go on the grill with my chicken. I'm going to place it decoratively around. Trying to get as close to the fire as I can. Oops, this one has a mind of its own, doesn't it? So I put this over here also. Just got six shrimp. One up here. And the shrimp are going to take just at the same, about the same time as the kebabs. So keep a very good eye on them and turn them when necessary. While the kebabs and the shrimps are enjoying themselves on the grill, I have my side, side dish here, my potatoes, and just going to do a quick dressing for them. Just a drizzle of some olive oil, vegetable oil. That should be okay. Sprinkle some salt, some pepper, a bit more pepper because I love spicy. And then I'm just going to cover this up with my foil. So I'm making this compact. Then I just put this on the grill to cook for a few minutes. 
until the potatoes are done and then I stir and I turn these and boy these smell delicious turn these thank god they're not sticking to the grill these are ready to be stirred or flipped rather thank god they're not sticking to the grill this one time I was making the same recipe and things didn't go as planned. <laughs> That's all I'll say. So I've already stirred this already. Just turn this one. The heads are coming off, but that's okay. So these are just due just a few minutes and everything will be done and dusted. OMG, this looks absolutely amazing. The shrimps are charred and everything looks so bright and colorful. I just cannot wait to taste this. This is the perfect kind of meal for this kind of vacation. I hope you guys try out the chicken kebab and the grilled shrimp recipe. Okay guys, that was the grilled chicken kebab video. Give us your comments, your feedback, and tell us how you make yours on all my social media handles. Don't forget to subscribe, to like, and to click the notification button so you can get notified whenever we post something. Okay, I told you I was making something chocolatey and I'm not going to disappoint you with my amazing hot chocolate mix. So what is hot chocolate mix? It's basically a mix of chocolate and milk and it basically is the base for a quick hot chocolate that is creamy and delicious. What is the star for today? It's cocoa powder. So cocoa powder is was originally thought to be um, first used in the Maya civilization in Central America and in the 16th century the, Spaniard, uh, the Spanish conquerors went over there and brought it and introduced it to Europe and it's grown in popularity ever since. Now this um, beautiful powder has antibacterial and immunal, um, immune stimulating properties and not to mention it tastes great in whatever big good that is chocolatey. Okay? So, after that, I have my white sugar as well as milk powder just to give it some creamy, milky flavor and some cornstarch so that it can give you that thick consistency you're looking for. So, let's get mixing because that's all that is left. Okay, let's get to the assembly. First, I need my sieve. Okay, I'm back with my sieve. Put this on top and now it's time for measuring. I have my half cup of powdered milk. Yeah, that's that. I have my one teaspoon of cornstarch. All of that in as well as my one quarter cup of sugar and my one quarter cup of cocoa powder and that's it all we have to do is see this oh yeah this smells chocolatey already and don't be surprised if some of the sugar crystals don't go in immediately all they need is a little push okay that's all it is and now all I need to do is mix this thoroughly so, mix it so I can get milk everywhere 
and what you can use this to do like i said for your hot chocolate you can get some hot water or if you want it a bit more creamy some hot milk and then you just spoon a couple spoonfuls of this and you're ready to go okay so that's been mixed and all you have to do is put this in a jar and keep it out of direct sunlight and this can keep keep for a quite long time there's nothing in this that can go rancid or can go rotten so this can keep for as long as you need it okay so that's it that quick that simple that easy we are have our hot chocolate mix let's get to the spaghetti bolognese my water already boiling in here and now I'm going to take some oil because it helps the spaghetti to stay separate so, little bit and now to the boiling water I'll add my spaghetti oh dear <laughs> that was a bit of a mess and then push it down and then leave it to boil Okay, so I have my water boiling in my with my spaghetti and a bit of oil to make sure the spaghetti is separate. And now I'm going to have or add rather two pinches of salt. I'm going to push that in. I don't like breaking my spaghetti because I like long strands and long pieces. That's just myself. For you, you can break the spaghetti. Put that in the pot. And put the lid on and leave it to boil for around 10 minutes. Okay, so now we're starting with the bolognese sauce. And I will start by adding some oil into my pan or pot, as the case is. Then I'll add my onion. And sweat it. When you sweat onion, all the juices come out and you best, mostly get the best out of the onion. So I'm going to sweat it for about one minute. And next, oops, I'm going to add the white of my spring onion. Just a little bit. Okay, so that's just enough. Now I'll add the white of my spring onion, although there's some green in there. Mix it up. Now I'm adding my carrot. My bell pepper. To get my mittens, I can't seem to find them right now, and then a tiny little bit of my ginger garlic. I'm going to leave that in fiber for about three to five minutes. So if I'm out my pepper. I'm going to let it fry for a little while. So now that my vegetables are a bit fried, I add my minced meat. Now minced meat has broth of its own. So before it starts frying, you'll start boiling in some broth. So you have to mix it in and let it fry for about 15 minutes. Now 
I'm going to be able to fry or rather boil then fry for another 15 minutes. Okay, so I found the pot I was using was a bit too small, so I had to put it into a bigger pot so it could fry well and I would be able to turn it easy. Okay, so I'm going to taste my bolognese to see if there's enough salt or enough pepper. I need a little bit more salt, otherwise it's really cool. Mix that up. Okay, so now I add my spaghetti, and when I add it in, I turn a bit, let it simmer for about three to five minutes, and then I bolognese sauce is cooked. Pasta water acts as a thickener, so when you're making your pasta, you should save some of it to add to the sauce or whatever you are going to eat it with, just to make it tasty and delicious. Okay, so now that the bolognese is fried, I'm going to add my pasta and the pasta water and then stir it to cook for 3 to 5 minutes and then my bolognese sauce will be done. It's actually very nice to keep the pasta water because pasta water acts as a thickener. You shouldn't always throw it away. It acts as a very good thickener and cover the pot. And in 3 to 5 minutes, our bolognese is cooked. Now, this is what a beautiful dish of spaghetti bolognese looks like. Wow, that amazing recipe could double as a lunch and even a dinner. Don't forget to subscribe and watch out for my next exciting video, which, as always, will be delicious. Eat well and be full. Bye for now. Today we're making something delicious in the little do-it-yourself section but before that we have two previous videos the peppered snail video and the palm oil stew video